today on Arcane City. I thought for sure there was going to be sand in those water bags. I thought for sure. <laughs> Only Tom's are all sand. Andy! the three amigos. Alive Ooh. to play Arcane City Season 2, Episode 9, <clears throat> Relics of War. What could that mean? <laughs> Who knows? We'll find out together. Okay. Guys, there are only four episodes left, which includes this one. If you die, you are out for the rest of the season. You get to, you go you go to the place where we said Brooke Armstrong. <laughs> somewhere, uh, uh. somewhere no one wants to go. Uh. <laughs> To her home <laughs> with Mike Armstrong. With Mike Armstrong? <laughs> That's the worst punishment possible. <laughs> no. Guys, let's begin this episode. Uh, when you last left off, Robin's character went into the forest and you stood around looking to see who you're going to see somebody. We cut away to the other other uh, parts of the group uh, so everyone could see. Go to a wide shot and show everybody, show everybody who was there in the group so you could see who was actually there. Damien, oh, raise your yes, hand. There I you go. There, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, these fine people were making making their run, uh, running in. You guys were joined uh, till then by um, uh, Caddick's father, who stayed behind, and he's going to go back to ensure that everyone else coming through the portal would escape, which includes um, Maya and um, uh, Vigorish and um, what's his name? Headley. Headley. You guys walk up and you see Robin is there. And who is next to Robin when you find me? Because we last left off, I told you that it seemed like I made it. I, I insinuated that he may not be by himself. Who is he with? Before I say, uh, you had a guess, didn't you, Tom? I I knew who I was looking for. Who was he looking for? And I'm hoping that it's oh, this person. I have an idea who might have been looking for. Well, say, great. <laughs> this is the, <laughs> the time. Dragon. That's the dragon? Where it is. That's who I'm hoping. Yeah. Dra- What's her name again? Um, Essence. 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 I'm That's hoping for Essence. That's who I was looking for. Yes. I guess Essence. It is, in fact, Essence. <laughs> and you're, you're, you're standing there um, and just kind of just like looking at her like this, and you're not sure of her intentions, perhaps, or you're not sure what's going on. And uh, but she, she's seen, if, after a couple seconds of her not killing you or whatever you think might happen, although all your intentions with her have been, have been friendly, uh, it's just that in this kind of world, seeing somebody come out of the woods is startling. Right. Um, she kind of just stands there, and moments later, Caddick runs up, and Dash runs up. You guys can role play. Hey. So? <laughs> uh, hello? Um, we made it. Good. Should have I've, been. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> I, I see um, you're not alone. Ah, the great adventurers have returned. Much has changed since your departure. I'm sure you notice now the world belongs to the immortal Dragano, and Indaria herself is but a shadow. You return to a world that is very foreign to you. You got that right. It's true. What what have you done in the intervening years since we disappeared? There, there has been much chaos, much war, much death. But I am here, tasked by Findelar to retrieve you as part of my duty to the Arcane City. I will help you, as you are already hunted by the ones you have left left back in Solst. The vampires seek you now. Oh, great. All right. You can help us escape them? Yes. Where do you wish to go? We need to... We need to see... We need to see Relic, the leader of the Crystalborn. The Iron King. If that's what they're calling him now, then yes. Oh, Iron King. 
Where are the others of your party? I am duty bound to make sure all of you are safe. Well, one of the members of our party is back in Souls, king of the vampires. Of course. Right. But where are the others? They have not come through the rift yet. Time works differently there. They stayed behind for for what to them may seem like minutes, but has been more than a day. They have not. They are still within Souls. Well, they will be in Souls. They will be in Souls. I will take you to our destination, and then I will return for them. Okay. I thought you said Findelar wanted you to take us to him. No. I have been tasked by Findelar to make sure that you are able to escape Souls alive. I do not know the whereabouts of Findelar. He left many years ago. And when Relic, the Iron King, took over, what, what role did the, the dragons play? Did they not stop him? The dragons did not stop the Iron King. No. Although I, I do know that the dragon that governs the area around the old Red Knight's lands, his name is Atlas. He is a, a cunning and very large ancient dragon. And ruthlessly wishes to eradicate the world of the Crystalborn as he sees them as a plague. The dragons do what they will. We are free. I thank you that you have offered to help us. I can take you <clears throat> as far as the beginnings of the Red Desert, for I cannot encroach upon the lands of Atlas. All right. If that, if that, you can take us there now. That gets us away from the source as quickly as possible. All of a sudden, you, he you hear uh, something coming up really, really fast. And you see, like, the brush kind of making sounds. And all of a sudden, three vampires jump out. You go, uh, and so they look at you, and, like, you, you feel like they're about to strike. And they look at her. And they just kind of, like, look at each other and then back off. They leave, like, like Mr. Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> I, step, uh, I step a little closer to it. <laughs> so they, uh, they leave, and they kind of run almost like as fast as they came in, perhaps, to let somebody know the news. She doesn't seem to, seem to be... No flinching from her. She just kind of stands there and like, looks at them with you guys. She looks at all of you. <clears throat> if you are ready to go, we can leave now. Yes. Yeah. Let's go now. You see her uh, put, put her hands together, and all of a sudden, um, a light goes into the air. You can see nothing but this light. All of a sudden, you're on the back of a dragon. And... Holding on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, everybody roll 1d20. If you roll a 1, you die. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, that'd be fantastic. Oh, what? We all know Dan would roll it. I'm not there. <laughs> Luckily for Dan. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> He's high in his tower. But if you were there. Let's see what I would have rolled. <clears throat> Go ahead, roll. 17. Is that loud for you guys? Yes. Yeah. All the audio has been changed now. Perfect. You are flying in the sky on Essence's back. She speaks to you. Please fasten all seatbelts and. <laughs> in the case of an emergency, in the case of an emergency, <laughs> your exits are everywhere. <laughs> what kind of what, what does she look like? This dragon. Like, She's like a purple dragon, actually, and you can feel like the arcane energy, like just like you know, emanating off of her. Um, we've never seen a purple dragon before, have we? Other than her? Yeah, your thoughts were that she's silver. She still may be silver, but the sky's purple. She's purple. You don't know the difference. Maybe she's purple from something else that happened, or you've never seen her in dragon form. She could have always been purple. You don't know. You're not sure. She starts to speak to you as, as you're flying. You guys are see, seeing the world for your characters. Uh, you've never seen the world this high, and it's you know the the feeling of going really high, where everything looks like little toy cars, except that everything looks like little toy cities. Uh, you're you're just flying above and looking at everything else, and you see, you actually get a picture of what this world is like, which is very different. There's not as many ships as you thought. There are a few ships traveling. You can see creatures and monsters um, just making their way through the forest below and just running rampant as if they practically own this world. She speaks. The world was a living entity, perhaps not one so easily understood, but nevertheless very much alive. 
And like all living things, it feels, it thinks, it is. And we are within its field of energy. Its life force and ours are inevitably connected. The light of Andar reaches our world, gives it life, which in turn gives us our life. What happens when the world dies, then? We are attuned to it, not to the immortal, so we wither. Many mortals went mad when the world died, and for a small time they were victims to their thoughts. Those that were dead willed themselves into existence, but without true substance in the physical world eventually faded away and were undoubtedly absorbed in Trugano, the immortal. Your journey is known to me, and trusted me by the wizard of Findelar before his departure from the Arcane City. He was convinced of one thing. The Archmage's disappearance, confirmed by his siblings, was somehow the key to what took place. But with no true understanding, was at a loss to undo what has been done. May I ask, now that you've returned, and I bring you to your companion, what will you do? Certain, I think. Uh, they, the Vigorish, uh, the Vampire Lord Vigorish, wished us to return Relic to him. Certainly, we don't intend to do that. But if we were to go to the Archmage's tomb with Relic, we would need the coin that Bordeaux has. Um, and I'm not sure if we want to do either of those things. I will say this: what we have learned in our travels through time and space is that I believe Finlor, Lord Finlor is right that the Archmage is the key and that we may have a way to bring him back. That way involves the Iron King. You will find the Iron Kingdom where he resides to be something you have never seen before. It is run, as I mentioned, by your friend, Relic. And he is now seen as both terrorist and Iron King amongst the entire world. And as you may know, he is responsible for the fall of the shield in the Arcane City during the attack. It is now known that he dropped the shield and it was the cause of thousands of deaths. After a time, as the story goes, it is said that he found other members of his race who were awoken by the joining of the ego world and the physical world. They became more and more sentient. He gathered them, he led them. This somehow created the birth of the Iron City and eventually the Iron Kingdom, which is called. Not a true kingdom, but it is a joining of the city's sunken city, Anwar, the, iron, iron, the city of Ironstone below, and the new Iron City created by Relic and the Crystal Born above. He flies over, over, over the, the water right now, and you see you're flying over Hallenbrand, which you see is still occupied by, you know, uh, like, a, like uh, many people that were there before, maybe about half the population now. Um, and it looks very different. It looks like there was actually a lot of um, combat here. It's, it's seen it maybe a few different battles. Um, and it looks, it's, it feels like we're living in the like uh, dystopian post the end of the world society. Uh, let, let me quote a, an appropriate movie for this. Um, the, the Postman. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Um, I'm are freaking you? out by the height. I feel a little better that we're over water for the moment, but... <laughs> My character's like a little, you know, freaking out a little bit. Of just being this high up. Gotcha. Freaking out. Um, <laughs> Don't worry about it. You're on your cousin's back. She ain't going to drop it. So you see... That's right. I'm holding <laughs> on for dear life. So, so you see that um, they pretty much boarded the outsides. And it, if there were a few ways to go into the city, it's now like been barricaded. So there's only one way to go in. And they've taken all, all different kinds of things and they just barricaded the walls up even higher and higher. And um, for what purpose, you, you're not sure. Um, she flies. Eventually, you cross over into the red desert. She lands on on the ground, on on the on the sand, 
<clears throat> and she motions in a way for you to slide off easily. Thank you. Slide Thank off. Thank you. She, uh, um, she turns around quickly. Hey, lady, wait. Thank you. Before you leave, what is the situation in the north, in Oak Frost? Have they been ravaged as the rest of the world has? I have not traveled to, to Oak Frost in, in a few years. But as I have seen it, much of the battle did not touch your lands. Many fled there. For the realm of the keepers seemed to be a place of safe haven to some sort. The Red Knight is all but defeated. And everyone who did not want to fight and follow him left for the north. I see. I wish you all luck. I do not know what you will face in the Iron Kingdom or in the desert. Be wary of the creatures that exist here and be wary of my kin. He goes by the name of Atlas. He is very dangerous. You will not survive any sort of an encounter with him. Good to know. All right. not, not that you would survive one with me. <laughs> well, that was backhanded. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> no. Oh. All right. Well, that's good. That's, that's good. Of course. The path then is clear. We needed to come in this direction anyway to get to the north. We know that the good and noble people of these lands have gone there. They simply need someone to get there, rally them, and back to the Iron City, then the Salt, and we will control the situation with Findelon. All right. So I just want to make sure I'm on the same wavelength with you. Uh, travel through the desert to Oak Frost. Go to offer us rally the people. Rally the people to take over the Iron King. Capture Malik. Quite right. Then. Back the souls. Kill all the vampires. Kill all the vampires. Get the coin from Bordeaux. Then travel. <coughs> don't we need... Don't Let Findelar know we've got it. Won't we need Relic's help to do that? If we I don't know if we need his help, per I mean, se. I forget. saying we're going to capture All of these magical... Things they spoke of. We needed relic there. I think it's his his essence is what's important, not his what he desires. I think is quite unimportant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> you are amazing. Um, <laughs> for anyone just joining us right now, we actually are playing. This is a homebrew. Uh, we had two uh, different uh, campaigns: Celestial War. There's four seasons of that in Arcane City, and there's two seasons of that, and you can find that on. Um, on a bunch of different platforms. Um, you can check it out here on Facebook uh, or to YouTube or Facebook or YouTube or Facebook. <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, like, yeah, lost the thread for a second. <laughs> so let me uh, ask you. <laughs> yeah, so you guys, there's two seasons of Arcane City, four seasons of Celestial War. If you want to begin at any one of those points, Celestial War is the first one, but you could start from Arcane City uh, season one and take away through. And, uh, yeah, sign up right now, subscribe, follow, and you can join in the fun, guys. There's a lot of ways to get involved. As we were flying before we landed, did we get a view of the desert to get a sense of, like, hey, it's going to take us X days, hours, years to get to you, a yeah, place. You, you're thinking this is, like, a, a week's journey. Just to get to, to the nearest city to where exactly um yeah. so you know what you could see from the distance something and it was hard to see a bit but you could tell which way to go um you're thinking it's it's a week in that direction it's a week to the red city probably about it's a week to the iron kingdom which is basically right next to uh Sunken city and right above anwar so it's a, um, it's, a, it's a week from where they are now to the iron city and then another week from the iron city to the iron kingdom when no no the iron no, city no. is the iron that's kingdom. the same place it's a week to the Red City, which oh, is like the middle of the I'm desert. I'm sorry. That's, and then another I'm week to get across that, the desert that's, the other way. You don't, you, you don't have to go to the Red City. The Red City means you're going north. Right. You're right. in Kingdom, you're just going west. Okay. So oh, I have, right, we have two options. And then if we wanted to travel past the Red City to get to Oak Frost, two weeks. That's like many weeks. Six, 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 six. As a dungeon master, that's exciting to me. Um, <laughs> that's so long you, you would have to go. <laughs> well, I, I just, you go to Red City, and then you would continue traveling up to Low Hills, where where um, Botorius is from. Yeah. You would go then north from there to Elden, and then there are caves going into the Goblin Mountains, which 
That's, that's what excites me. And they're, it's like, and they're they, not fun with that. They're not called they, that because they don't have goblins. <laughs> oh, there was no goblins in there. I can't it's believe halflings. it. It's just halflings that live in there. Just They call themselves goblins to keep very everybody out. It's very, it's very safe. Uh, very safe. Richard's <laughs> asking about how close is East Watch. East Watch is about, is about a week also because they'd have to travel north and around the mountains. So the only thing that's not a week's journey is Hallenbrand, which you just passed. Well, you know, when you were flying, which you could get back probably within like a, a day. Right. Didn't look very hospitable or like things they were going well. No, not very welcoming, but also in the wrong direction. Right. If you're going towards Relic. Yeah. I, I. So, okay. I just wanted to get a sense. Like, if we were to go to Oak Frost, it would take us like three weeks of traveling through this desert to do that. And like, this desert seems to be a death trap. Be a dangerous journey for certain. But what? Well, or oh, the option, and I don't think this is necessarily a better option. But the other option is to go and try and find Relic and talk to him. That is where I find the plan falling apart. Talk to Relic. Last time we spoke to him, he was bad. It's true, but time changes people. The last time we spoke to Vigorous before we just did, he was a, a young boy afraid of his own shadow, and now he's the king of a city. Lord of the Vampires. Relic is a terrorist and, and a king. Do you imagine his 17 years as a terrorist king has mellowed him? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't. King. I don't. I don't. I don't. I guess, I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. Maybe it is just me. But I feel a sense of time ticking. Maybe it's hanging out with Mr. Bardo too much with his clock, clock, clock. But I feel a sense of time ticking away and I feel that if we if we don't do whatever we can do as quickly as possible we may not have a chance to do it and that's maybe, maybe that. we should go to the nearby town first because we might need supplies stuff like that right I mean are we prepared to make a week's journey I like, have indeed well uh, no, from I'm, here no <laughs> I've never been in a desert in my life I've never left that city before yeah, me neither so uh, that's what I'm saying. Like maybe, I don't even know what, to, what I don't even know what it means to be prepared for a desert journey. Well, we're probably going to need, you know, food. We left in a bit of a hurry. We. Well, what did uh, you do while I was running away? Well, well I we got this shiny armor. Acquire arm some yes, excellent supplies. I got, I got, yeah, this yeah, helm. Yeah, I got these <laughs> bracers. Was, they look very nice. They're fantastic. Okay. <laughs> so that may be the right idea. Back to Hallenbrand. For a moment. Right, that's close, right? But can get there, let's maybe, say then. Get some problem. supplies. But let's say we do all that and we get to Relic and Relic proves reasonable. Why? Then we go the back we to Salt with Relic. Have it, have them help them kill the vampires. Mm. Or have them just go to war with each other, whatever. We go in, sneak, <laughs> sneak, sneaky, sneaky, like we did when we all first met each other. Sneaky, sneaky, steal the coin. Leave. Let them fight. Let the vampires try and turn metal into vampire. See how that works. It's, it's a good idea of them fighting each other. Right. And who cares? Whoever wins doesn't make a difference. If we succeed, all of this disappears. That's the goal, right? To figure out a way to go back and change all this so it didn't happen. That's the goal. So that we don't have to worry about making the best of the situation. And if it goes south, then we run... We try and get us north as quick as we can. At least then it's a safe haven. And I feel like if we go there now, like it's going to derail everything. Source is already looking for us. It's true. It sounds good. This plan. In. Right. I, I have no problem with going to uh, Halibram, uh except um, how are we going to get supplies? Does anyone have money? Does money even work uh. now? I do have some money. All right. Not I much, do. but a little bit. I have some money, but yes, does it work? I know not the... Right. I we'll have to see. I mean, otherwise... Evaluation. Right, otherwise... I don't see how we'll survive a week out here. I, it's with, a desert. I imagine nothing. if we travel a day, we'll die from thirst. I don't, I don't know how this works. Have you ever traveled through the desert? Uh, not through the desert. No. Travel through cold tundra and such. It can be similar. No water. Not much. Okay. Food. can be harsh. Yeah. You know what we need? Maya, she's this is what she does. Mm. Yes, <laughs> you've, never, you've never needed her more <laughs> than right in this more. entire thanks, game thanks than right now. That. This is like her shining moment. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> she's stuck back there <laughs> with Mike Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's her choice. 
<laughs> no one chooses. <laughs> anyway, um, um, let's uh, do it. Let's all right, so you want to try and go I, back to that city? I think that's. I mean, in retrospect, I don't see how else we're going to. We should have asked her to drop us there, I suppose. But that. Oh, we did. That is too yeah. late for that. Yes, well, we're not really experienced adventurers. <laughs> you better get experienced real yeah, fast. Well, that's what we're doing. <laughs> this is it. That's why I said we're not going to make survive a week's journey right now. So let's go to the closest town and. All right. Do we? I guess in all of our training, before this whole thing went south, mm-hmm. um, do we have any sense of like just? I would say normal, like what. In the real world, I would know about going into the desert. Like, hey, it's probably better to travel at night than the day because yeah, yeah. Anything you know about desert in real life, you can apply here. Okay, which um, is not much. Just, <laughs> right. And also, remember, you're in just you're you're in second season of the show. You guys have you guys have had six months between the seasons, and you guys had um, about six seven weeks of training. But that's all you did. I mean, right. you, you right. plus, plus your first adventure, you have venturing under your belt. Right. I I don't feel like I don't know what, but it's just like. You're right in the fact that we're not prepared to travel across the desert, and we should know that. We should know that that's probably not to just, well, just figure it out. That's why I brought it up. All right, so, so um, <laughs> all right. Perhaps I should have did it so earlier, but. <laughs> no. We were busy not falling. I was really holding Indeed. on. <laughs> all right. Let's, I guess, try and let's go. Well, go back to Hellenbrand and see uh, Hellenbrand. Hellenbrand. Hellenbrand, yeah. And um, okay. see if they offer us anything. You guys tra- travel a day. Back east. Everybody gonna roll right now. One d twenty for an encounter check. Uh, Four. Eleven. Five. That's it. <laughs> I keep it's only three of you. <laughs> yeah. I, can, I, I'll, I would gladly it's, roll. It's, oh no! <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll let you roll because I let Dan roll when he's in their territory. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, no. What is it? What is it? It's, it's an eight. <laughs> I don't know what that look was. <laughs> um, I was hoping Dan would give me a reaction back a little bit to like throw your authorities off, but it didn't work. <laughs> so you, you guys spend your time traveling back. In that time, it is just um, if you're like your question before, you're wondering if you understand the 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 arid, dry wasteland that is the desert. You come to know it in just that one day. Um, you guys have like sand all over you. Gets everywhere. It's coarse. Oh, I know. Sorry, no. I was just gonna just start with. <laughs> and uh, everybody's so mad at me. <laughs> um, you, <laughs> you guys make your way back. As you guys are, are traveling back, something is coming from the west. You're not sure what it is, but it's coming in pretty fast. It's like... <laughs> something Something. This is maybe about a couple of feet wide and uh, maybe, I don't know, five, six feet long. <laughs> you realize something somebody, as a person on it it's flying over our heads from behind us. Not not high. A couple feet so off the ground. Nearby to us, like yeah, they just they just pass you. Zip do we? But they're so fast, we can't get a good look. Is that? Nope. They just look like you. You see what they are, but you like you don't see a face or anything like that. What's this magic? Were they like vehicles or people on a, a person <laughs> on some sort of? Uh, something. something. I don't know. Why, I don't know. The two of you look to me about magic stuff. I, well, I don't I'm know. a translator. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen things. <laughs> You've read many a book. You have eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen things and read books. Yes. <clears throat> you have hair <laughs> and wear shirts. <laughs> Sometimes. What's that? Um, if I had to make a guess, those are things from the Iron King. That. Mm. Richard Wilde. Yes, it is from the project. It seems to be. Ooh, Derek Luxon, yes. <laughs> it seems to me that that, that gave me a uh, I don't know an impression of something that came out of uh, the Sun City or, or Rhaegar, like one of those like technology things, mm. right? It had like a hum to yeah, it. Some mechanical creation. You love those a mechanical mm. beast. <laughs> uh, can we see so those things? Are they just still going in far? Are, are, do they, they keep traveling? They come as fast as they came. They're gone. Okay. Perhaps they traveled to Halimbrand uh, as well. Imagine a motorcycle riding past you around, around like 150 miles per hour. Wow. Got it. All right, I just want to make sure they weren't like... No, they're not circling you. Yeah. Take a care <laughs> Circle the wagons around it. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's keep going. You guys make your... Uh, <laughs> many leather-bound books. You, uh, broke, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, you guys uh, finish your journey, and you um, arrive 
at Hallenbrand. Hallenbrand's uh, walls, it was a walled city of stone. That wall has been um, crumbled in some bits and replaced by like iron sheets like put up. There are many uh, guards on the walls. A lot of these guards have like tattered red uh, clothing, uh, capes. In some, in some cases, most or half of the normal armor a red knight would wear. It looks like this is the remnants of red knights. And as and obviously, obviously it is, the remnants of the red, uh, or, or ci red city of the Red Kingdom. Not the Red City, a city of the Red Kingdom. Um, there are multiple guards up there. Some of the guards are carrying what looks to be some sort of uh, gun, which you recognize, like a gnomish weapon. Some of them have their swords. Um, and they kind of just stand there, and you're pretty much being eyed down as you uh, arrive. You walk, yeah, I imagine you walk over to where the gate is. Yes. Yes. Okay. You walk over to the gate. Halt! Halt. Halt. What's your purpose here? Greetings. We are travelers. We seek some time in your fine city. I am Sir Caddick of Oakfrost. This is of Oakfrost. Yes, indeed. We are on a mission of some great urgency. Need some time in Helen Brand to prepare. If you wish to stay in our city, you must have something to offer. You offer hope or gold? <laughs> That's like a bunch of them laugh. <laughs> we do not need hope. There is no hope here. We only wish for trade. We have some so, gold to purchase. Some gold will be friends. fine. How much gold do you have? How much do we need? How much do you have, travelers? This is a bold question, sir, if I may say so. Do you typically ask such a question of all travelers to your town? I think they do. I control who gets in and out. And for you to come in, I better have a good reason for it. We do indeed seek trade. Supplies, perhaps a guide. You all come from the north, from Oak Frost. I don't come from Oak Frost, but... but originally, no. We're trying to travel through the desert, and we need supplies. He, he you don't have to stay long. He leans back and um, talks to somebody. You can stay the night here in Helen Brand. Five gold each. All right. There. Very well. Here. All right. I pay. For everybody? Okay. Oh. No, I got... I, I got five. You? Do you need money? You need money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not that embarrassing when you're not, you know, in Earth. <laughs> I'm a, so I pay for Robin as well. All right. I got it. I got the phone. Got mine. Okay. Okay, they open the, the gates. The gates are creak open. Uh, you see there's some old ropes and a pulley system opening it up. You walk in, and you see there's... A society living amongst the walls. There's kids playing. Uh, there's some guards around. The guards are mostly all on the roofs. And um, you see a couple of makeshift shops. They're pretty much close up to the wall. It's kind of, you, kind of like you walk right in, and the shops and the market's right there, and in the back has been pressed all these makeshift houses and things like that. You can see the remnants of a mine that's all the way in the back as well. Oh. The mine still seems to be active, but not as it once was. It's, it's partially collapsed. All right. Look, we're not here for sightseeing. Let's get whatever we need to get. Get moving. Oh. Get moving. I agree. All right. Very well. Supplies. Yeah. All right. Do it. All right. So, uh, shops to the left, shops to the right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is probably about tw 12, 12 uh, little shops and all. All right. all right. Pick one that looks like it might have rations and yeah. stuff. Things for a journey. Store. Okay. Hello, hello, welcome, our travelers. We're having a lot of travelers Thank today. You. What can I sell you? Mm. Oh, uh, interested in purchasing some rations, perhaps a uh, water uh, skin. You know, skin. Yeah. You must travel. We have, yes, we're traveling through the desert. I could give you a water skin. Yes. Anything else? Rations, water skin, perhaps some rope. You never know what's going to happen out in the Red Desert. It's true. Perhaps, perhaps. His how rope. much uh, How much would that be? <laughs> Is this, <laughs> I want to just up and down this guy because he's creeping me out by his voice. <laughs> <laughs> if you wish to buy the rope, rations, how many rations would you need? About 
journey will be at least a week. I think we should get about a week and a half or two weeks each. Oh. I think. Two weeks each of rations. Let me go in the back and see what I have. <laughs> okay. And water skins for each. What? And water skins for each of us. Oh, got it. (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. So, two weeks rations for for the three of you. Water skins. And what did I miss? Rope. Rope. Ah, the rope, of course. Three ropes. No, no. Two ropes. Two ropes. Two ropes. Hundred feet. Fine. Very helpful. Fine. Okay, for everything, it would be eight gold. Hmm. All right. Hmm. All right. That was a desert proving scroll. Hmm. <laughs> like, hmm. That is a number. That seems reasonable. That's reasonable to me. <laughs> that, that seems somewhat reasonable. Uh, <laughs> ah, yes, all my prices are very reasonable. Can I... You think? Uh, can we see the rations? Yes. Of course you can see the rations. I want to see the rations And the rope. Let me take, take, a, look. Me take a look at the rope. Yes, take a look at all the goods. They're all real rope and real rations. <laughs> How much water do these skins hold? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> As much... Uh, just look at that. I see, I see, I see. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Perhaps it's about 18 ounces? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. You can't exactly go swimming in that now, can you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, right. no one's ever asked me how much water it has to hold. They usually look at it and say, this is good. <laughs> I, I, believe, I, believe, I believe the answer is enough for you to survive. You think it's enough? <laughs> yeah. You think it'll be enough? <laughs> to go through the desert? No. <laughs> no. no. You're going to get two weeks of rations and one water skin of water. That's true. No, Probably you've never enough. traveled the Red Desert before, eh? Uh, no. But what? But you are lizard-born. You are, you, are, you are not requiring as much water as everyone else, perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps. you don't need it. But these fellows, this uh, man's wearing armor. He's going to go to the desert. <laughs> You're going to be dragging him after well, the first day. <laughs> that was one thing I was considering. Perhaps we need the service of a guide who could bring us to water holes along the way. Or pack animal. There are guides here in Halabran. You can hire any one of them. Yes, they will take you anywhere you wish. Oh, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, where in town can I fill these water skins once I purchase them for you? There is a well near the mine in the back. You could fill it there. Of course, there is a price. Of course. If you go through me, I could get you a better price. <laughs> How much water would you like? <laughs> think about it. I am thinking about it. <laughs> should get <give> some more <coughs> skins then. A skin per day, I think, is what we'll need. Yeah? I think. Right. Now that we can find a place to fill them in the desert, which I don't know about. Carrying all that water will be very heavy. Okay, no, I think we need a pack. So you'll need, you'll need about 42 water skins for your journey? It's a lot. I have it, of course. I have all sorts of things, and I'm always prepared. If I wanted to buy, um, if I wanted to purchase a pack animal, a horse or a donkey, ah, travel with yes. us. There is a place to get a pack animal, but I can get you a better deal. Of course. So what would you like? <laughs> Well, how much would it cost for us to get... Uh, what sort of animal of burden would you prefer? A donkey? I don't donkey, know. I think, would be sufficient. We not, do not look for speed in our animal. Yeah, I believe there could be a few donkeys there. I will find out for you. Okay. How much would something like that cost? Will you bring the donkey back? If we can... <laughs> Maybe bringing the donkey back. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course we'll bring it back. Of course. We have every intention to do so. If you buy the donkey, you will pay ten gold. Bring it back and get a few coins back. All right. I've never leased a donkey before, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I look at my two money bags, partners. Excuse us one moment, good sir. Of course. Your privacy is of the utmost importance. <laughs> <laughs> he goes in the back and he's looking at stuff. He's just like... <laughs> I don't know. Man. So... What do you think? Ten for a beast. Eight for the rations. That's not well, including the amount of water that we actually need. Right. Right. Well, I have... Twenty. Twenty gold is all I have. I can... I have... I have a little more. I'll, I'll get the, I'll get the animal. 
Yeah, they got him. Um, and I can do. Whatever, I'll chip in for the other stuff too. Alright, I'll, I'll, I'll work on getting the guide. Let's see if we can, I mean, we gotta see what the final price is gonna be. How much of those water skins he's gonna throw in. Right. All that, you know, for that price. Or yes. for, you know, if we, a reasonable extra price. I think it's gonna be buy more from him, he may. It'll give us a better deal. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't help overhearing. Um, I, of course, would give you the best deal around. Excellent. Um, so, yes, uh, if you can help us arrange to get a pack animal, and uh, we would take, uh, I don't know how many water skins and donkey can hold, but take that many water skins. Okay, I can give you about, uh, well, let's call it 50 water skins then. There'll be plenty of, of uh, water for all of you. In case something goes wrong, um, and we'll call the thing 17 gold for the donkey and all the additional water skins on top of our previous arrangement, of course. The original eight. eight. So right? a total works. of 25 gold. Ah, this one's good at math. <clears throat> what do you think? Seems reasonable to me. All right. Yes. Good job. You made mention that it has been a busy day for travelers here. It has. Who else has been... It does not look from the outside like this is a well-attended city. Who else was in here? Where were they? Everyone, being in proximity to the water, everyone, every once in a while, people stop in. And also there's many uh, blunkers and miners, and we should go into the, into the old mine and see what they can find in there, of course, for a price. But... They do, and some of them walk out with some gold, and some of them lose their lives. So, we do get the occasional traveler here. Okay. Helen Bram was once known for its mighty golden mine during the Red Knights days, of course. Do any travel to the Iron Desert from here? The Iron Desert? Do you mean the Red Desert? Where are you from again? I'm from Oak Frost. There is no Iron Desert. There is the Iron Kingdom. Yes, of course. There is the Iron City within the Iron Kingdom. Ah, uh, yes. Mm. So Names what? have changed in these times, and I've been long gone from this, ah, these lands. So what is your question? Do many head west from here into the desert? Yes, of course, but not, not without some sort of transportation. No one in the right mind? Well, let's finish our transaction first. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the gold? Does that include the filling of the skins? We can fill them at the... Uh... You, yes, I will make sure that. that all of them are filled for you. Except one. One will be sand. What? Just kidding. <laughs> A little humor. My clients love me. They think I'm hilarious. Uh, what do you think? Should we go for it? <laughs> yeah, it's your money, but yes. <laughs> I believe so. All right. Um, uh, I will take arrange everything for you. Um, figure out where you're going to be. I will find you. It is easy to find you. And I will deliver your donkey with the waters and everything you require. And if you need anything else, I am How long is it going to take you? Well, um, a few hours, I would think. All right. We, we won't be far. We'll be... Very good. I am Andy. 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 I will see you soon. I must close the shop. Tonight we fill your order. All okay. Right. <laughs> Out you go. Thank, thank you. He walks out. The key, it locks the locks up, and then runs away. How much are you paying out of that? <laughs> Tom's like, don't like him. I don't like him. <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't actually pay him yet. Okay. No, you didn't pay him yet. No, no, because he no. Well, oh. not no. no not. He, st he stops for reason. If you didn't pay it, that was the point. Right. Does he need to be paid in full before we get everything? Oh yeah. <clears throat> no. So well, I'm just gonna give him all the money. Here's the money. Stuff. Here is the money. Yeah, we have it right here. It is real. When you will when, get it. When you come back to us with all the stuff, we will give, we'll give it to you. I will, okay? For this large order, I cannot ask all these people and make this purchase okay, for so you with no you... gold. Right. Give me half now, and you'll give me the other half later. Fine. Andy is very respectful. And very respectable. I hope so. I hope so. Okay. Fine. Do not okay. hope. All right. I give him half. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Rob, I'm in for 20. You got the five. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he leaves. And you guys are within Hallenbrand. What right. do you want to do? Well, what do you think the odds are we getting those supplies? <laughs> he will give us those supplies. Is he a madman to take our money? 
<laughs> well, we know where your shop is. I mean, uh, he's not going anywhere. I guess there's that. Uh, One thousand stars comes in. Change the weather. It begins to rain. Yes. Your wish is my command. <clears throat> Who's that from? Let's not go far. Oh, that call, sorry. It comes from Lauren Hicks. Who's that from? <laughs> Come on, Dan. I love when it rains. You see the uh, uh, clouds start rolling in. And it uh, seems pretty good. Not that bad. And uh, it's fine. Ooh. Oh, no. Refreshing. There's, there's some little lightning. A little storm action happening. Very refreshing. Feels like a Lauren Hicks kind of storm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Oh. Go to an inn, perhaps. You know, rest, get some information while he gathers our supplies. One of the guards comes over. You better get inside. Sometimes these storms get pretty dangerous. All right. Is there a, an you. inn or a tavern that. Uh... Yes. Thanks. <laughs> As you can point it in retro. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> let me show you how it is on the, on the ground here. <laughs> 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 uh, he puts he put the stick down in the, in, the, in, the, in the sand and starts drawing it. And it looks amazing. And you feel like this guy's really good at drawing. <laughs> Wow. That's that is, where it is. That is amazing. Well, thank you. I I spent many, many years uh, painting and drawing, and I even had my own shop in Sunken City before it all went to hell. Mm. That's really, that's amazing. Work. Very nice. Thank I'm you. afraid that it's rainy. It's going to get all wiped away. Oh, it's... I could draw them all day. Right down there. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that little nugget right there. For you. <laughs> if, if you know, you know. <laughs> Gerald? Is that his name? Yes, yeah, Gerald. Yes. <laughs> so, um, all right, we go to the tavern. I like that Gerald is still, still kicking. <laughs> but he's very old, right? He'd be I much, think he's got to be like 60, yeah. 70, right? Yeah, he's, he's half elf. Did I mention that? <clears throat> Did now. He's half elf. Good, good, good. Time, good time there to mention go. it. Good time <laughs> to mention it. He's half elf. You guys make your way to the tavern. Um, Dan or Vin, I'm going to let you guys name the tavern. Go ahead. The Fiery Cistern. Huh. This Fiery Cistern? Cistern. Like a... But why, yeah, but why a cistern? Yeah. A pool of water. It's like a, it's like a, you know, like a concrete, like, cylinder or something like that. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Brooks says Gerald Da Vinci. <laughs> Gerald Da Vinci. <laughs> okay. So, um, you, got, you go to the Fiery Cistern. What's the, Vin, what's the picture on the uh, sign? Oh God! Um, the, the, it's the, the the what's it called? The, the cistern. A cistern with, with, with fire. fire. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Don't overthink it. Stretched thing. on that I was one. Try, yeah, I was trying not to stretch on it too much. You guys, you guys walk in, and um, you see there are, are some people hanging out. Some people are drinking. Some soldiers. Some townspeople. Some miners. Different things like that. Uh, probably about eighteen people in all in in this uh, tavern. Um, you believe in the city there's probably maybe about 2,000 people? I call it a city, but like, that's what it is. All right. Um, all right. Uh, should we have a seat? I'll grab, yes. some, I'll grab some drinks. Okay. I'll go uh, up to the bartender. Okay. Walk up to the bartender. Hello. Dan, you're the bartender. Oh. Out of town or what'll it be? Uh I need three beverages. What do you what are you serving here? Well, we got some ale. Uh That's about it. Alright then, three ales. Alright, three ales. Where are you coming from, sir? Uh north. North? Mm. A lot of land in the north. Ah, yes. <laughs> ah, yes. Coming up north, making our way through the through the deserts. Through the desert? You came through ah, the yes. desert to come here? Well, we're on a journey. You're on a journey. Ah, yes. You know, traveling. Passing here through? there. Oh, yes. Where to? What's your story? Ah, it's boring. You wouldn't be interested. My boys are very thirsty. Thank you. This is what I do. I'm a bartender. I listen huh. to people talk. Oh, yes. So what do I owe you for these three elves? You're not going to tell me where you're headed? Well, no. Okay. <laughs> Mysterious lizard man who passed through the desert to come to my bar and have a few ales. That's right. You traveled a long way for those ales. I did. Uh, you must mean you want to pay a lot for them, huh? Well, no. 
<laughs> Especially if I'll be buying any more. Oh, okay. Well? Well, what? Your ales are there. What's my you, good sir? If you're going to be drinking more, I'll give you the tap at the end. Oh, all right. Well, thank you. All right. Talk too soon. <laughs> Bring him up to you guys. Uh, he was. I saw you had quite the conversation with the bartender. What did you learn? Nothing. Ah, I see. <laughs> did, uh, you see the doors open. You see Andy walks in. Ah. He walks over to uh, one of the tables, sits down. He says, ah, yes, so what's going on with you today? Oh, yes. That's what <laughs> Great. <sighs> uh, I walk over to the table. So. Hello. Oh, he says, ah, hello. Are you enjoying, enjoying yourself here? It's very dry in here, which is better than outside. Yes. Storms happen. <laughs> yes, they do. My mother said that all the time. She was right. Where's, um, how are we doing with getting our supplies? We are doing good. I've made my connections with the, uh, the man down the block. I forget his name, but he was Brutus. He sells uh, all sorts of beasts of burden. I have talked with the miners in the back to arrange some water for you. It's all being filled. I'm just waiting for it and figured I might get a drink while I wait. Mm-hmm. All right, then. Very nice. We're over there. You're welcome to take a seat with us if you like. Ah, I... I will take a seat with you. <laughs> Dude, I'll, everyone, I'll see you in a little bit. He takes, he takes a glass. He actually takes someone else's glass. He goes, hey! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, why are you going to... Uh, did you say where you're going? I forget. No, we didn't. But we're traveling into the desert to, uh, to reconnect with old friends. You're the going r- to the desert to reconnect with old friends. Yes. <laughs> I hope they're skeletons, because... <laughs> You'll all be skeleton and bone and nothing together. They well, might be. That's that's a nice, uh, that's a nice sentiment. Desert is very dangerous, you see. It is very dangerous. Mm, we do fear they may be in danger, but we must check. If they are in the... In the <laughs> you do not need to check if they are in the desert. They are in danger. Yes. Uh, but we are, I guess as you can say, duty-bound <laughs> to <laughs> try and help them if we can. Duty-bound. Well, uh, I mean, the proper way to go through the desert would be perhaps to... Uh, never mind. No, no, please. The good old-fashioned way. Get a donkey and make your way across. <laughs> of course. You made... This is your second allusion to the fact that we perhaps are not thinking about this the right way. Please enlighten us as to what your opinions are. But the proper way to travel across the earth. Of course there are other ways. No much technology can bring you through the desert very fast. You could do it in uh, a little over a day. But it's very expensive, and those who have the uh, those gadgets and, and wherever they are, they are uh, hard to come by, and they're not easily parted with. You also can't carry as much things as you could, and you draw more attention to yourself. So mm. perhaps the old-fashioned way for some that don't really know how to travel. When you say like these nomads can travel, you mean like um, those like speeders that like people travel across? They travel at ridiculous speeds. I've seen them before. Yes, uh, but I, I'm not sure what they are called. Um, uh, every, the I name escapes me. The quick moving things. Yes, they move. They move fast over over the desert. If one ah. was interested in perhaps uh, obtaining some of those, would they be available for purchase here? No. No. Like I said, those who have them do not part with them easy. Mm. There were there were some people like came in earlier, I saw them, I don't know where they are now, but are two individuals who came in with uh, these, these gadgets and such. But again, they're not going to give you their their things. No. I, no, no, one, no, no one gives things for, for nothing, but if, if there are people, if there are people in this town right now who may have advice that we might want to have ourselves, mm. I don't think it would be anything but worth our while to speak to them. Yes, and they've come That's from the direction we're heading. At the very least, they may have well, information. If you know, if, if, if you happen in all your travels of walking around... And, and if I come across them, I'll be sure to lead them directly to you. Ah, much appreciated. For a price, of course. Of course. Well, well this has been fun. I should go check on your things, and... Um, Thank you. I'll see you soon. Drinks the rest of it. Sit down. No, it's... He points down to the other guy, <laughs> <laughs> and he leaves. Uh, you guys, are, you guys are sitting there. So there's a whole interesting amount of 
<laughs> a lot of different people in, in the tavern hanging out. Um, and uh, that's it. What do you want to do? Role play. Um, in all your good conversation with the bartender, did you ask him anything about like looking for a guide or you know, um, uh, unfortunately, state of things in the town? I didn't. Sorry. Well, you've got a relationship with him now. You guys are very close. I, I wouldn't say so. I think he's just trying to get money out of me or information out of me. And well, good. Give him some information to get some information back. You can do it. You've got a rapport. I can see it. We both we both noticed. Concerned about giving up information about, like, where well, we're lie. going. Lie, then. Tell him whatever. It doesn't make a difference. He doesn't know. <laughs> okay. Just tell him whatever you want. Say that you're going to Oak Frost to visit his sick uncle. Mm. Yes. I believe in you. You can lie. It's easy. <laughs> I just did. Go. I don't know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I go back over there. Dash, with the dash, bartender. Dash, dash. With my empty cup. Ah, lizard man of the desert. Uh, back for another ale? Yes, thank you very much. Well, okay. One well, well, guy gets up and he goes, you're wandering down the ale. I'm leaving. I'm going over to my... Maya Hewick's temple. Much better there. Oh. <laughs> Maya Hewick's temple. Have you been there? No, I can't say I have. <laughs> if he thinks this ale's watered down, he's <laughs> in for a big surprise when he goes over to that place. Oh, really? Ah, uh, Yeah, you get ruffians like that guy all the time trying to tell me that I watered down my ale. Please. These, these, these ales come from the best cisterns you've ever seen. All right, then. It's, um, it's good to hear, I suppose. Uh, yeah, headed out into the desert tastes, soon? Tastes pretty good, you know. <laughs> huh? Put us over the table. So like. perhaps, <laughs> well, yes, we will be heading out soon. Uh, um, since uh, it's the case, I was wondering, uh, do you know if there's anyone uh, who guides people through the desert? Uh, such things like that, or transport people, or... Anything? Have you heard of any such things as this? Sure. Are you looking for a guide or are you looking for a transport? Uh, not really sure. Uh, interested in both, you know, perhaps. You know there's a couple of... Either one or the other. You know there's usually e- either some sort of rangers or some guides for the desert. They usually hang out. They travel themselves, uh, but sometimes they'll guide other people for a price. And they usually hang out, like, just kind of the other side of the town near the walls. You usually make a, make a campfire, they hang around it, and they just chill out. Are you looking for transport, or are you looking for a guide? Like I said, I'm not really sure. It depends. Uh, perhaps one or the other. Well, okay, well... I'm just um, interested at this point, you know. Well, well, the answer is yes. You can get transport, you can get a guide. Uh, Where would yeah. we find such folks? All right, when you come out of here, you go down that way. You go see, uh, go see the guard you saw on the way in here. His name is Gerald. He can paint a nice map for you. Oh, He'll show he you showed exactly. Us the way here. He yes. showed you the way here. He brings plenty of patrons here. Believe me, he drinks on the house when he comes in here, Gerald. Nice. He's a good guy. But what you want to do is ask Gerald where you could find the guides. He's going to show you a map. He'll show you to the uh, to the fires where they where they sit around. You ask for Bunt. Bunt is the best guide in town. He knows the desert like the back of his hand. He's been through there many many times. He comes in here. He gets a meal. He goes back out into the desert. And uh, works himself up quite an appetite. Quite a thirst, too. All right, then. Transportation, I, I don't know. I really can't help you with that stuff. Mm. Have you, know, you I... seen these fast-moving <laughs> things that travel? Yeah, they come by here every once in a while. We had, we, had, we had two guys come in here not too long ago. They like to, you know, it's rev amazing. their engines and let the entire world know that they're passing through <laughs> on their fancy vehicles. But, you know, that kind of thing's not. Quite uh, impressive. The door opens. He goes, I have all of, all that you require. It is at my shop. Come when you're ready. Oh. Here it is. Andy, quit scaring my patrons away. <laughs> mm. So sorry. <laughs> <sighs> no that to do that doesn't scare people. Yeah, you saw him. I did. It's a creepy guy. <laughs> he comes in here, people are having a good time, and he comes with his slithery little... Whatever you call it. I shall have to look out for him. Okay. Hey, what are you going into the desert for, anyway? Well, we're going to try to find some old friends. Old friends in the desert? Mm. In the desert? 
Nobody lives in the desert. We've got a lead. All right. Yes. Well, listen, like I told you, go to the fires, ask for Bunt, he'll help you out. All right. Put a gold coin down on the on the, on the the bartender's bot tab, and I walk away. Back to you guys. Okay, what do you guys want to do? All right, so I tell you about Bunt, the, the guy. He fills you in. Where You're all, caught up. All right. Let's, let's go. probably go, right? Uh, all right. Speak to Bunt. Drink. You guys uh, walk outside, and you're looking for the guides? No, we're looking. I'm, I think we should go to... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get our stuff. Andy's, Andy's shop. Yes. You go to Andy. First. Andy has everything out there, and you see the donkeys there, and it's all, it's all like, filled up to the max with all the water skins and everything else. It has all the rations. and all your stuff on it. All right. All right. This looks good. Check it out. Bye. Everything looks look good. good. Yeah. All right. I give him the rest of the money. Ah, very much. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, good luck to you, and uh, try to stay, uh, keep your throat wet. We'll do our we best. Will. Yes. Thank you. Good. 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 All right. Good side. <laughs> like drinking the tea. I'm like, I don't know how to check horses out, but I would not be surprised if all of this stuff falls apart as soon as we leave the city. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 like this falls off, it's just like like sticks with holding it's on like a cardboard. <laughs> it's cardboard. Dante, <laughs> <Daddy. laughs> damn it. Um, <laughs> going, no, so far it's not sticks and cardboard. Uh, where do you want to go? Uh, I guess let's, uh, let's go find uh, Gerald again to draw some map if we can. Okay, you see Gerald uh, just just talking to somebody. He goes, ah, oh, yes, and you just go down there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I had the shop in there in the sunken city, and I tell you, it was probably the happiest points of my life. But, um, yeah, things change. Oh, hello. 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 We seek the ranger, Bunt. Bunt, oh, yes. Uh, there's actually a few guys in, in, uh, in town right now, if you're looking for someone. Um, you're going to, I can definitely recommend you uh, something very appropriate. Um, you are going to across the desert, you're going north, you're going west, or you're going on uh, on the uh, waterway. Where are we? West. West, initially, for a bit. Certainly, that's the part of the journey uh, primary focus is, is on right now. You'll want the, the, the biggest person you see down there by the campfires. Biggest person? Yes, he'll help you. What's the name? Um... I don't think I know it. Well, he's the biggest. We can't miss him. Okay. Yeah, very big. Probably about uh, 12 feet tall. 12 feet tall. Let's see. Is he man? No. No, he is not man. <laughs> not if he's 12 feet tall, he's not. He's one of the crystal born. Oh. Interesting. Uh, okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, head off towards the fires. Yeah. Which way he pointed us in the direction. Okay. All right. We want to pay for a guide, really. Is that what we want to do? I'm just. Right. I don't know where I'm going, and I will probably die in a desert <laughs> day or two. So, okay. yes. <laughs> I'm with you. We want fine. a crystal born as a guide. Yes. He's going back to his hometown. Uh, but must be careful not to reveal right. our true purpose. Our true purpose is to meet with his king. Right. And. Rekindle our own friendship. What's a if he finds out our true purpose, and and then help his kingdom overtake another kingdom? <laughs> we, we he wants our true purpose, I'm sure. But yes, let's not reveal it. Let's not. <laughs> I will talk. Okay. <laughs> you will not say I am the Lord of Oakford. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. <laughs> okay. You walk up to. Uh, t- you walk up to. Um, uh, the campfire, and you see there's a couple like belongings um, in different groups, th- different things like that. Um, you see an elf sitting there, and the elf sitting there is just like twirling a gun, just like playing with it. And uh, he has like a red cape, he has like something over over his uh, forehead, um, and he has uh, another gun on his side. And on his back, he's got like a big rifle. And he's just kind of sitting there, like twirling the gun. Uh, next to him, you see is, is a dwarf. This dwarf has like a, a bandolier on. It looks like he's like, you know, like like uh, packed up with a load of all sorts of supplies and such, and he's just kind of sitting there and he's he's willing, willing something right now, and he look he looks up at you, doesn't say anything, and next to them you see is you've seen Crystalborn before, obviously, but you've never seen one this big. It's 12, 12 feet tall. You can tell you know that from them telling you that. You see, just sitting down, it's just like a hulking of a, a monster, and it, and it like look, looks up to you. It doesn't scare you though. It doesn't look like he's aggressive or anything like that. Just kind of just kind of looks up at you. And then uh, looks down. None of them realize that you want to speak to them. It just seems like they're just watching you and just 
So you come up. And he looks like a suit of armor, like yeah, like the other ones. Okay. Yeah. I, I pardon me for interrupting, but um, we were advised to come here and look for a guide. And where we're going, we are told that uh, the crystal-born man here uh, is the person we should speak to. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm Bunt. I'm the dwarf for you. You should be taking me. Where you going? Uh, Bunt. Oh, we've heard good, very good things about you too in town. Uh, but why not choose Bunt? Well, uh, just we were advised that where we were going, which is west, the desert. That this person here is the best person. Where's west? West is a lot of different places. Where are you going? To. If you want a guide, you have to tell me where you're going. It's true. Well, we, we look to we look to seek audience with the Iron King. You going to the Iron Kingdom? Yeah. Nah, it's not Bunt's territory. Sorry, but... I, I I figured. Again, Bunt. Literally, I've, we've heard nothing but good things about you. And everyone here, in fact. No but, problem. I'm not going there. Don't worry about it. But uh, <laughs> you, uh, our Crystal Burn, hopeful friend, would you be interested in taking us? You look at the Crystal Born, uh, Dan. Your name is Holgar, and you are a Crystalborn. Wow. And, you, and you look up. Want to borrow the mic? <laughs> no. Yeah, um, uh, one, <laughs> no? Okay. Before you continue, Fire into Stars from Jacob Kip. One reroll for Tony, because even DMs can have bad luck. Thank you, Jacob, for appreciating oh. it. Very nice. Uh, Fire into Stars from... <laughs> No, they oh, can't. The they can just go, oh, it's all, no, it works. Oh. Uh, you got a reroll from um, from Richard. Thank you, Richard. Nice. Uh, this is a guy uh, on patreon.com slash audio dungeon. You can become part of it, the show. You can contribute, and you can get have free rerolls to give out every episode. And we appreciate it. And thank you. Um, Derek Luxon gives me a reroll also. Nice. Rob, Rob gets, gets upset inside when you give me rerolls. Uh. So there's no better reason... It's, it's true. And just for that, is you, you, <laughs> you just crushed Rob's soul just a little bit right there by doing that. It's, <laughs> a, it's great because it's like a double. It's like he didn't get it, and Tony got it. It's like <laughs> I, I have to write it down. <laughs> double. Though. Yeah. yeah. All right. And you got to keep. You get triple smacked. <laughs> so, um. All right. All right. Get me a looking for a guide if you uh, are interested in taking on that role. I can be your guide into the Iron City. The, the voice that matches your size. <laughs> ah, uh, <laughs> um, so, um, what... Let's go right to it. What would it cost to take on your services for us? Well, that's a long journey. Yes, indeed. To the Iron Kingdom. Yes, Looking at about a week's journey across the desert. That's right. I would say that journey would cost you about three people. I see you have a donkey. Yes. That would be about 20 gold. <laughs> so when he talks, you see uh, his whole suit lights up brightly when it, where he speaks, but also kind of everywhere in the suit. What color um, is... Holgar the Crystal Born blowing. I will say. Let's say red. Red? I was thinking the same color, too. There you go. Um, wow. You see, you could tell on, on his body that there's some etch work that's been, that's been done to him. And uh, also, it looks like the iron that was there has been replaced by, like, um, red steel. You could tell that wherever the you don't know anything about this, but you could tell whatever the process was, it was done slowly over time, just like it's all patchwork, things like that. Alright. Um twenty go. Alright. Uh if you mind, just I wanna make sure we're all okay with the price. Well how, how much do you I have fifteen currently on me, so I think you we spent have all your money. I mean no, I didn't spend all I got some um, I think we could afford it. Fair price. I don't. Y yes, I don't know. <laughs> He's six to twelve feet tall. I think he says it's a fair price. He's crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> but what if this thing should go mad while we're traveling? Man? Then he'll kill us all. I know. <laughs> I'll tell you this. I 
with every passing moment, I'm more certain I'm dying there by myself. <laughs> Maybe we'll have a chance to eat the donkey before we go. <laughs> All right. Do you want to do Richard Wilde, I can't. I won't no, tell them you? that because it's kind of a meta game. They do would have, have to have done the research for that. No? Yeah, yeah, I have, a, I have a lot of money. Oh, really? Yeah. Lauren Hicks gives Rob a reroll. Thank you. Really? Hey. Here we go. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take care. I'll take care of this. I have a lot of money. You do? <laughs> yeah, I just didn't want to spend it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he mentioned. He just mentioned. That is That's great. fantastic. <laughs> I, I wanted that to pay off tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about like, letting that go for a while. But I'm like, we're probably not going to spend money after this. I want to pay this. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll, get, I'll get this. All right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do have coin. Yes, 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 yes. I thought earlier you <laughs> did not. No, I just asked if you would pay for me. Well, of, co of course. It's a strange request. <laughs> Is it? Well. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> pay the guide. It's great. <laughs> um, I do not know your name, sir, but you'll we find your, uh, your price acceptable. Very well. My name is Hogar, and nice I will be your guide through the desert. Nice to meet you. Nice uh, to meet you, lizard I'm, man. I am Dash. Dash. Friends, Robin, Caddock. Robin, and Caddock. It's a, a strong name. Hogar. You rec you recognize the name? Yeah, I know, but I, is it like you don't know? If you know. yeah, I, I feel like yeah. you're probably named after the great hero, right? Or, right. You know. Um, like maybe I'll, I'll there we go. It. They just caught it. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm like, no one has any reaction to this. That's and all funny. of a sudden, he goes, what, 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did he say Hogar? <laughs> um, <laughs> Welcome uh, to the stream, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, Hogar, uh, normally I would feel something like this. We will pay you half now, and then when we arrive at our destination, you get the other half. Are you acceptable to you? Yes, that's standard practice. All right, here is ten gold. Thank you. Put it in my metal pockets. How soon do we need? Like Palenko. How soon can we leave? It's it's not my journey. We are ready when you are. Okay. Then let us begin. I walk into the desert. <laughs> you are very tall. At least we won't lose him. <laughs> Brooke is putting it all together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, picturing, I'm picturing the end of uh, usual suspect. She's like dropping the coffee cup. <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys uh, leave Palambram? Yes. Yeah. You guys walk out. Uh, you have all of your um, supplies. You spent a lot of gold here. Um, yeah. But you need to survive. Uh, you guys begin walking uh, in into uh, the desert, which you believe will be about a week's journey. Uh, for you, you're not worried about... You've, you've done this trip before, obviously. Um, but you're not worried about food for yourself and water. It doesn't matter to you. But um, you see that they have, a, they have enough to make it. Um, and that's it. You guys uh, begin traveling through the desert. We're going to roll for your first day an encounter check. All right. I'd like to carry some stuff on me. Like, okay. like a water skin, some rations. Just how just much Just a little it? bit. Uh, I guess like one or two skins and, you know... Give me a number. A couple. Uh, all right. Uh... I'll carry one skin and like two rations. Okay. I have the right down in your sheet. The opposite flavor of pack animal. And that's where my stuff is. No, uh, I to travel as light as I can. Damien's predicting something's going wrong. Right. Well, I don't know. It's, I it's, like a, it's, a, it's different. It's di that's totally not different. Not all the eggs in one basket, you right. know? Like, every, like things <laughs> right. carrying the whole. I do the same thing as Damien. Everything's, yeah, come on. Hold, hold. <laughs> no, right? Uh, that's right. It's the same philosophy, right? That's I'm right. Like, <laughs> um, so. Uh, you, um. <clears throat> You walk out of the the city, and when you get, when you when you get there, you realize you you forgot something. Mm. If you realize what you forget, I'm gonna give it to you. Something that you always do when you leave a place. Something that I always do when I leave a place. Yeah. Or so recently, recently, and then you do it, and then you have the thing with with you. I take the thing, <laughs> and then I have the Evan thing. Evan gives with four rerolls to Hogar. Wow! Thank you, Evan. Wow! Nice. 
Can you burn wow. one? Can you burn one of them right now to figure out what Tony's talking <laughs> about? <laughs> uh, me personally, or like the general you? Hogar. The general Hogar. Do I have a vehicle? No, but you're not far off. Something you do when you leave. I say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> You had to be very polite, and you were. That's the seat. That's the. Are you serious? There's something I'm supposed to be doing. It's something that you do when you leave. Close the door, Dan. So that th so that <laughs> you can have this thing with you. I take it with me. Yeah. Um, not, is it a? You don't have to take it. It comes. Oh. There oh, you go. Oh, <laughs> really? What do you do? I call Lucky. Oh, so what do you do? Go ahead. All of a sudden, yeah, I see on top of the wall. <laughs> when he leaps down off the wall, an oh, incredible, wow. incredible jump. It <laughs> runs up to you. Yeah! <laughs> oh, good boy. <laughs> I, hug his, I hug his face. Is that a very old wolf? <laughs> I would, I would, yeah, I was, is it a real dog? Is it a real, <laughs> oh, wait, 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 That's wait. a great question. Yes. <laughs> has, has he aged at all? No. Yes. Wow. What? I mean, we wouldn't know, but yeah. Wow. When did I? When did he? When did he leave the sunken city? <laughs> <laughs> he was put in in, in Arky's care. Arky, yep. Our Arky oh, wasn't. Wow. Arky willed him to Arky. Or asked Arky to Arky take care of him. Arky wasn't too crazy about that. Not really, but he did it anyway. <laughs> why does they have? Why does that have? <laughs> Come on, guys. Well, how long are we playing these games? This is, uh, is going to be a great adventure that we could do uh, uh, some day in the future. The, what is? The, the crazy adventures of Lucky. Yeah. Yes. It's going to play a wolf? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Oh, we do the Animal Quest. We great. Awesome. Oh, my God. You want to play a quest where you oh. a wolf? Animal Quest. Animal oh. Quest. I, I would totally do yes. like a mini Animal Quest. I'm actually kind of doing that yes. already. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. In real life? Oh, you mean now? <laughs> <laughs> Even <laughs> outside voice. No, no, I'm saying dash. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm lizard man, so sometimes we'll do, it feels like How about that. one day we get together and we do a one-off, a few hours, the, uh, and we'll divide up into episodes. It won't be live. We'll just we'll do it. Oh, yeah. Animal Quest. Maybe even yes. at the con. <gasps> Animal Quest. I, I can play I Lucky and Rob can, can play, play Arky. A bear, or I was thinking maybe. A bear. Tony, maybe even at the con, perhaps, as an idea. That's wild. That, that might be too wild for the con. Wild, but <laughs> wild. Just an idea. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. okay. Wait, 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 wait. Let's get back here. We'll talk about it. We're we'll bear, bear Patrol. Bear Patrol. Bear Patrol. Bear Patrol. Um, <laughs> that's, um, I'm so excited about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Any, um, all right. So you have a wolf. Okay. Good. Good. And the wolf looks like it belongs in the snow. All right. Mm. Can I can I make a <laughs> some kind of history check here or something like that? Is that ringing any bells to me? Uh, make yes, and that that would be a, definitely be a check. Mm. I would say fifteen or higher on a uh, your most appropriate check. Okay. Uh, right. There is a, there is a legitimate history check if you have it. No, I don't. No, I don't. Uh, nope. Okay. Anyone else want to roll? Just to see if you know. I don't think just, I would. Maybe, I could just, just roll. Just, think or actually, could you, roll. you only roll d12 if you don't have it, so you can't even really get it. Yeah. Anyone have a knowledge of three? I do have a knowledge of three. Nope. But I, I do. So. Okay, so. Okay, roll. Can I make a 20 roll? No. Yeah, Unless you have a knowledge uh, uh, history. Oh, right, it's 15. You need a 12. Five. Nope. Wah, 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 wah. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, you guys uh, walk along, and that's okay. what's happening. Right. Um, we rolled for an encounter. You guys go to your first day. The, ca the campfire is still playing. Mm. It's very hot. It's very hot. And then you guys camp out at night. We're gonna make it. We did a lot of role playing today, so I'm gonna make it a two minute role play. Then we're gonna proceed. Right. This is this is at night of your first day. It's cold. Mm. It's better than hot, I guess. You could play. You could play lucky. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> you know, sometimes I wonder why we got Vinny on the show. <laughs> and it's like moments like this. Only that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. uh, Hoga, um, just <clears throat> out of curiosity, just because we usually have bad experiences with things like this, do you? You don't happen to have a bad relationship with the iron. 
kingdom, do you? That like if they see you, they're gonna be mad at your back or anything like that? A bad relationship. <clears throat> no. Good. Good. good relationship. Excellent. Oh, that's I'm just you're not in you're here, not there. I just wanted to make sure that like usually when we usually when we run into somebody that someone helps us out in any way, we there's usually some bad thing that happens right afterwards. So we just wanted to make sure that I'm trying to eliminate <laughs> possibilities. What what have you been through? I'm I'm a guide. I travel from one location to another. Through the desert. That's what I do. Alright. Well glad that you're here. Um no, just you know, we've <clears throat> you know, we I'm certainly not as traveled a man as as as, as you, travelling the desert and whatnot. But we've been through all things and most of the things that we've been through end up, you know, being alone outside of a desert and having to walk through it by ourselves. So that's the way our lives have gone of late. I've, I've been in your place before. Someone took me through the desert many, many years ago. Hmm. Why? Well, I'm, um, uh, okay. This made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> get the feels. Well, a little warm and fuzzy inside. Yes, I was, I was so warm and fuzzy when you said that. <laughs> Good. Um, oh, well, you know, if you ever want to tell us, I guess, the stories of your early desert adventures, that might be a good way to pass the time while we're traveling from dune to dune. Uh, sure. It all began. Uh, <laughs> tell oh, him. Oh, right now. Oh, so okay. Say, <laughs> say, say, as you're going to tell him in, in a hyper way, tell him, just say the the note, like the, the battle just or the city. And because since we all know the story, that, then we'll assume as, if you tell him something. Oh, like we, what you would tell us. Right. Say, like. Just say the words. You know, oh, like, you don't the tell us the whole story. Title, just, just say right, the title right, of the stories. Like the title of what, yeah. You, uh, I'll start at the beginning. Traveling. To the sunken city. Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay, so he tells you he tells you a story yes. of him traveling through through the sunken city, and that he had a mission to to uh, guide a wizard named Fiddlar, and uh, they, they had to get they had to get the, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> he had to get the the crystal rod that was created by Arky Fint in the sunken city. Take it away. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> 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 are you telling me? Are you telling me? Are you are you? Are you telling me your your Hoga Hoga, like the Hoga, the one that every person on Earth knows about? Oh, there, Daria, there is, there is no other Hoga. Wow! And these vile crystal born have trapped your soul. Easy. Vile crystal born. I. Well. No, he had a bad experience with one. Don't don't don't. Yes, well, don't take many, his word. It's many not, many. It's not how we feel. Yes, one with, crystal with, born once. One crystal born uh, yes, certainly. betrayed us and attacked us. Yes. Some of the some of them we trusted. Which crystal born? I was, uh, he's, uh, he's somebody I will say this and hold your own tongue. Somebody that I still consider a friend. We just had a disagreement about how to go about a certain situation. He did not like our decision. And he attacked us. But he's still alive and that is who we that is who we are going to see. Now because we need his help. He betrayed you. Yes. And you're going to see him now. Ask much him for help. Much time has passed. You know, sometimes... Time heals Time, me. yes. <laughs> that's it's all water under the bridge now. What, what makes you think he would help you now if he betrayed you in the past? Well, he got what he wanted by his betrayal. And we were previously allies. Yes, we've been through a lot together. And I think, I hope, he still has a soft spot for at least some of us. That's it. Excuse me for saying, I mean, I have some experience with bad plans. And this doesn't seem like a very good plan. No. No. But there is no alternative. We have we've been tasked with doing something. Uh, and the person that we need to talk to is the only person who can help us do it. And if he does not agree to come, we cannot succeed. Hmm. We must find out. Oh, uh, I get down. Oh, man. I just lay down. Me too. 
For those of you that notice, you hear rumbling in the what desert. What is that? Oh god, do you know what this is? And it dies. What was that? You recognize that as the Dragon Atlas. <laughs> and, you, and, and, and at times, you can hear him at, at distance. That is the overseer of the desert. The Dragon Atlas. Oh! Yes, we've heard. Yes, we've heard. He will is it sure death to sound it going. It finally dies and fades away. <laughs> is it gone? <laughs> oh, is it gone? He'll be gone for a while. Oh, I should have bought extra clothes. <laughs> 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 um, if he gets any closer than that, we may have to put out the fire. Jacob Kick goes, Tony, you just freaked me out, dude. <laughs> and then hits it on and was going again against some stuff when he did <laughs> Excellent. Audio dungeon. That's, he freaked us out, too, if it makes you feel better. All right. Um, yeah, we, don't, we, we don't have a choice. It is either we can talk to him, we convince him to help us, or we fail. There's no other option. Well, is this an important mission that you're on? Mm, it is. You have only noble intentions. Well, I Richard. would say this. It, it, it is a... Richard what? Wilde wants you to mention that you, you know his father. You say, or saying to him, you know my father. Oh, all right. Um... Right. So yeah, I, it is a mission that has been given to us by uh, by a, an agent that you uh, you are familiar with. I'm familiar with most of the ancients. Oh, that's true. Uh, but I have the, to be more specific. The Archmage. We know where he is. We know how to bring him back. The Archmage. Yes. My... <laughs> <laughs> My relationship with the Archmage is very complex. I wouldn't begin to conjecture, but um, my home is overrun by vampires. You're from Solst. I was. A long time ago. You began your journey in Solst. As a crystalborn? Mm hmm. And everything was coming, tumbling down. We could say that you tell the story if you want to. You want to tell the story? Sure. All of a sudden, you came to life. And you're looking around. And you look over to a spot that looks like there might have been two other suits like you next to you. And you're in one of the towers in Seoul somewhere. The entire tower is just falling down bits and pieces. And you look out, you run to the, to the, to the wall where it's, it's already been crumbled. And you see some sort of boulder go flying by and bash one of the other uh, towers nearby. The next thing you notice is not what it's outside, but the fact that when you ran over, you were not the same. You weren't flesh. You were this this creature of iron, crystalborn. You had a you had a, you had a feeling of this before when you came back to save Findalar. And then it, it seemed just like oh you did it and it was over. But now it's like you've woken back up. For some reason, it seems to be your life. It seems to be like here you are. You don't know if you don't see Findalar. You don't see Abyssia or Thistle or Arky or Pretorius or anyone else. You look out the window and you see that the city is surrounded by half giants. And you look out to, to see like your kin just attacking Solst. No shield, no shield over Solst. You see wizards in the sky. You see the walking tower at a distance, doing a lot of damage with wizards shooting lightning bolt and fire, all sorts of things. You see cultists running through the streets with all these emblems on their heads. You have no idea what's going on. This isn't the world that you left. You saved this world. You look into the sky and you see, unfortunately, a very familiar purple light. And the first thing in your thought ahead is like, Dragano, the immortal. And just what is this? You escape.
from Solst. You encounter him, but not by not before you encounter a few, a few of the uh, vampire creatures. These creatures literally jump on you and start trying to pummel you. You take them and you realize that you were strong before. You are easily three or four times as strong now. And you you literally break one of their necks, slam against the wall, and <laughs> punch another one, and his neck just breaks breaks back, and falls up, falls onto the ground. You then run over to the ledge and realize that you could probably just jump down. You feel like you'd be fine. You leap down to the ground. <laughs> you run through any any half giants that come in your way. You kind of just bat them out of the way and you make your you make your way outside of the city. That is your escape from Souls wow. and your rebirth. Do I have a What's my last memory then? Of of, of of no no of being human, of being half giant. Yeah. Um, Sorry, half giant. Yeah. You have bits and pieces of memory of being in the eagle world, in Andaria. It feels like it feels like waking up from from a dream, and that you <coughs> and you can kind of half remember all these dreams, and the most clarity you feel is when you save Findalar, and that yeah. and it's kind of and that feels like a dream in a sense, in a way too. If that makes sense to you. Yeah. Before that, saying goodbye to everyone. At, at what you thought was the end. Okay. You guys um, finish talking. You go to sleep. You wake up for the morning. And you begin your journey. Once again. Um, we're going we're gonna to roll for this a little bit faster this time. Roll uh, 1d20 for the four of you. 20. Ooh, okay. Nice. I'll nullify a 1. Nine. Eighteen. Okay, roll again. You still, you still have a 20 on your side. I'll nullify, I'll nullify any 16. low numbers. Nineteen. Six. Okay, you're good. Keep going. Once a three That's is a bad six, number, just 16. so you know. Eighteen. Nineteen. You got... So, to, to attribute to Holgar's excellent excellent uh, rangering skills, uh, at times he stops you in, 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 the, in the dunes. You lay low. You hear the rumbling every, every once in a while. You stay away from it. Um, you make your way for several days. You're, using, you're drinking the water, you're eating your rations, and you're getting by fine. Thanks to Andy. It's good old guy. He <laughs> pulled through for you. Can't believe it. Every I thought, time, what a character. I, every every I, time, every night. I thought for sure there was going to be sand in those water bags. <laughs> I thought for sure. Oh, only Tom's are all sand. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> Andy! <laughs> That's three amigos. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that scene. <laughs> yes. That's so great. Um, you guys uh, make your way so a, f a few days, and um, you see in the distance an airship floating low to the ground. Like, it's about a mile off, and it's making its way north towards what you think might be the Red City, but you're not sure. It's mm. amazing. The ship is basically floating, probably about ten feet in the air, and has uh, it has a blue crystals uh, underneath it. Do you have any idea what the deal with that is? Just an airship. They pass through sometimes, not very often, but you see them come through. All right. Hmm. Do I know whose ship it is by any chance? From here, you can't see. Your vision is not the same as it was. <laughs> you guys make make your journey. Um, after uh, three more days, if I have it right, a week total, you approach the Iron Kingdom. You walk up into the city and it built behind the mountain next to Sunken City. Apparently they've they've run sort some sort of um, tunnel through the mountain, and you see this thing that you've heard about it being built, and now here it is, it's built. It's actually a railway a system. And you see steam coming out of some sort of train, and it comes in it comes into to the city. People are getting in, Crystal Born are, get, are getting in, gnomes are getting out, and they're doing stuff. And then you imagine that in a short amount of time, this well, as walking up, you would eventually see the the rail system um, just go around and then go right back through the um, the mountain and go through. 
the entire city, the entire planet is. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. Um, um, the entire city is made of iron. All iron. Probably just an accident. <laughs> um, and there's all sorts of all sorts of different things. You see small signs of like crystal tech being used in different different places. Sometimes it's something small as a light, which is actually a small chip, like a, a very very small chip of crystal, an amber. Um, you see so, some cable like wires running to running to different places. You see you see these speeder bikes, these jump bikes, which you might, might call them, like <laughs> running out out of the city. Some coming in, some coming out. Crystal born, <laughs> making their way through, through the uh, the city. Um, as you get to the outskirts of the city, you 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 see that there's some sort of interesting economy here. Ninety percent of, of the things moving around are these crystal-born iron suits. What they are, um, you see um, gnomes going up to them and talking to them, and you even see one gnome is working on uh, an iron iron board, on a crystal board. He's sitting down and he has like a saw out, and he's actually he's actually putting an emblem. Here right now. He's putting it on the um, on the arm of one of the uh, crystal born. Um, lots of lots of tall towers here, and as you get into the city, there are two final things that you notice. One, there's an area that's obviously some sort of lift, and it goes down below the ground. And two, very high up in the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Very high up in the mountain <laughs> is a uh, a fortress made of iron, and next to it, and next to it is a um, a couple of two different platforms, and you see airships are up there, and there's an assortment of cannons around the entire mountain, like protecting it, the, the, the grounds around it. You may not ask me questions. If you have any questions about uh, the description of the city. Or anything you want to ask me, go ahead. And also, uh, I'll answer questions. Not specific, don't ask me where people are. Don't ask me specific questions. Ask something about the Iron Kingdom, or this is the Iron City, a part of the Iron Kingdom, and I'll answer that. Go ahead. Who's did, playing the bugle? Did, did we get on the train? No. Okay. There are humans here, too? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I love it. I'm sorry. There's somebody playing a bugle here <laughs> who <laughs> also played the bugle now. <laughs> Just say. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, anyway, um, you, any, you, any you, you look off in the distance and you see there's a gnome walking around. <laughs> Who is it? <gasps> no. Yes, he could be here. He's not a gnome, though. Uh, what was he? Dwarf. He's a dwarf? Yeah. It oh. looks like a gnome, but your eyesight's terrible. Oh, man. It's a dwarf. <laughs> His name, no one cares it for us. <laughs> His name's Sippy Trexton. I'm so happy. <laughs> Sippy! <laughs> Brooke, see what happens if you miss an episode? Lucky uh, comes back, Homer comes back, Sippy Trexton comes back. So wow. he's playing the horn, one of the greatest. I mean, guys, I just have to stop for one second. We played We played a um, pre episode for Audio Dungeon, which you've heard bits and pieces of some of them sometime. This, this, is, this is two and a half years ago. And just this one episode was this dwarf. He had like a lisp when he was talking like that. He was a very lovable character, and he was like, like he was a bard, and he died. Everyone was just so upset that he died, <laughs> and uh, but now it seems that he's back. Wow. Somehow he's, he's back. Wow! Is he crystal born? He's not crystal born. So the question is, why is he back? Not crystal born, still alive. Okay. Because what the dragon uh, essence described to you is that things, people came back for a while and then they faded away, died from the chaos, lot, living or dead, depending on what they were, they went away. You know that you're still here, but your soul is in the crystal. From season one, end of season one. Right. The only other person we know who came back came back as an undead. Right. So if there's if something that detached you from Indaria. So imagine this. This is an out of game explanation because I think it helps people. Imagine the planet, Indaria, and imagine like the field of our heart and our, our our minds. You know, like whatever the essence is. Or no pun. Around around the entire planet. So you're living within the life force of Indaria, which is what essence was was describing to you. Symmetrics. Um, and when everything went awry, if this sinking ship was, was, you know, being destroyed, which is Andaria, if you were attached to it, you started to go mad. You were actually creating things out of thought. You were, your, 
your real life nightmares are coming alive, your wishes are com coming alive, all sorts of things. So some people found ways to detach, coincidentally, on purpose. So what you know is that some gnomes detached instantly, by, well, lot, pretty much all the gnomes that survived did it, by putting a chip of, um, of uh, uh, emerald inside of them. And some others, who were like cultists of uh, the immortal, put chips of uh, obsidian inside them and connected themselves it's almost like getting on the new Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> we got some 5G up in here. When I say it that way, it makes total sense, right? They, <laughs> connect, they connect it to the new, the new planet's energy. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. So like there was this moment of just pure chaos, and it, this moment lasted for, for weeks. Hmm. So there were a lot of different ways to deal with that madness. There were a few mm -hmm. that you've heard of. Um... You mentioned what the town looked like and like the general structure, I guess, of, of uh, industry that we saw. Are they guards here? I yes. Know there's, there's, I know there's cannon. It's all open right now. There's no uh, walls built, and the sounds you're hearing are, is the sounds I was describing before. But you also see construction of a giant wall that's starting to build around the entire um, okay. city. Um, all right. The fortress in the sky, the castle in the sky, you know, on the, on the top of the bow. The Iron the Fortress. Does... Would I... How do I ask this question? Does it look like a king would live there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, and does it look like it's accessible to... You, ima you imagine somewhere in the mountain would be the way to, to get up there. <coughs> you're, not, you're not really sure. All right. Um... No, this city, by the way, again, the, the borders in and out are just very loose. It's right. just like you kind of just entered. It's like walking into Tatooine. It is. All right. Um, anybody else? Do you have any questions? No. Oh. All right. Um. What, what, what's the ratio of, say, crystal born to non crystal born? In this city? Yeah. Like 90% crystal born? Okay. You think they're, um, you've been around now for a while. They make, uh, we, is the city making more crystal born? As, what was the uh, question? Is the city making more crystal born, like building more suits, building more crystals? Okay, so you, uh, instead of answering, you're asking him, but yeah. instead, instead of ans answering that question, instead of he answering it, as you walk through the city, which I imagine you're walking through, just kind of just getting a feel of this place, right. um, you walk up and you see um, a crystal-born, and he seems to be, um, he has all his armor, like the, the iron suit, painted blue and like a white stripe down it. And um, he seems to be talking to um, these other crystal-born, which are actually there and they're they're kind of sitting there and you see him walking around and in his in his um palm is like a, a like a crystal and he he kind of waves the crystal by these um other other suits and you see that the the suits kind of just get like riled up they look around they, they, they seem to be kind of like coming to life or some sort some sort of higher form of life. You can roleplay. Uh, okay. What's he doing? I think, uh, I think we just witnessed the miracle of birth. Have you ever seen anything like that before? That's how they do things here in the Iron City. So, um, Mm -hmm. Remember we mentioned um, that we we were coming here to meet a, an old friend, right? Then, yeah. You know, we have had a falling out with the last time we spoke to them. We didn't really mention who that was, and I think it's appropriate now that we do, since we are here. So our old friend is um, the Iron King. As you see that, you see uh, it's an assortment of these crystal-born warriors coming up. And that most of them are paint, painted like this, uh, this like brilliant uh, silver and such. And they walk up, and in the middle of them, 
you see Relic. The Relic looks pre pretty, much the, pretty much the same. A, a couple of different emblems on it, maybe a couple of different things. And uh, he walks up, and you see the, um, the one in the blue kind of turn to him and sees that Relic's nearby. And he turns, and he steps back from all the, all the, um, the ones that have woken. Probably about seven or eight of them. And he goes, Lost souls of Andaria, I welcome you to your new existence, one that welds together light and soul. You have found your way through the void and made the journey from flesh to iron. You are ironborn. Ironborn. Keep doing that. You are crystalborn. It is a new existence, but do not fear, for you are free and protected by the Iron King. The first of our kind, destroyer of Solst and the Red Kingdom, and the founder of the Iron City. Welcome to the Iron Kingdom. Its emblems protect you. Of the Iron City, the Anvil. Of Anwar, the Coin. Of Sunken City, the Hammer. And of Ironstone, the Axe. Within this kingdom is four districts. They are your allies, and they are your new home. Anwar, the free city below. The sunken city. Ironstone. This is where you belong. Our mark is the anvil. Our city lies to the eastern side of the mountains, at the brink of the red desert. There are many of us. And you are one of us. And you are free. You see, they kind of just like, kind of just start trying to understand what's going on. And he walks over to, uh, to the side of the relic. You feel like this is where you speak for a second. I got you. How are they taken to the process? Like many others, they will need their time. But at least they did not come into the world with fear. Welcome, brothers. You are home. You are safe. Join us. Get your bearings, and when you are ready, we will speak again. They seem to be like just like nodding and like kind of. You can tell like they're appreciative as much as you could tell, in, in, uh, as you can, for a, a, a crystal-born. As you, the second you finish that phrase, you look past them, and you see this giant, um, this giant robot, robot. You see this, this giant. I'm doing a lot of thinking in my head right now because <laughs> you, you see a giant crystal born, uh, about 12 feet tall, and you're pretty sure you haven't seen it, you haven't met him, um, but you're pretty sure that this is Hogar. Um, with him. Are your companions from 17 years ago? We will now role play. Do uh, do I have any particular feelings toward the Iron King? You can decide that as you go. Okay. For those of you watching, once again, I have thrown Dan into a very, <laughs> very big spot, <laughs> relying on Dan's improv skills. Does, do we see that he noticed? That he, that he sees us? Yes, you, you lock eyes with his cold iron eyes. <laughs> I, uh, all right. I bow down. I fall asleep. Your Highness, I've traveled a long way to seek audience with you. So it appears that you have survived, huh? And who is your big guide here? Is it who I think it is? Uh, I, it surprised us. But I will let him introduce himself. I am Hogar, your majesty. I have heard of your return, but I did not know if it was true or not. Welcome back. Hopefully, when you arrived, it wasn't as traumatizing as most have the uh, unfortunate 
pleasure of occurring when they first come to Crystalborn. My king, perhaps we should finish this up in the Iron Fortress. I believe with his company you are correct. If you will please join us, we will take you to a secure location. Of course. He leads the way. He brings you out. You guys are just walking. You're not talking with Relic probably this time, unless you want to. Do you want, do you want to just go there? Do you want? Okay, no. So you guys make your way to the, uh, the mountain, and you see there's a lift in the mountain. It goes right up into the Iron Fortress. Within about 30 minutes, you still can hear Sippy Tricks in it. <laughs> with that bard playing with that bugle. Um, the acoustics are really, really yeah, fairly good it's, spot. It's, it's the mountain. It's great. Um, <laughs> when you get up to the... <laughs> I feel like you get Gerald over here and put it together. Um, <laughs> And when you get up to the, to the, uh, the top, there's no windows, just like this open floor plan. And you just see like this, these large windows, kind of like this, kind of like these over here, so to my uh, left and right. And um, it's just like these large open areas. And outside are these rows of cannons going out there. Um, but the view is incredible. Because you look at one side of the fortress, which you almost can see it, because it's not that wide in this area where it is positioned in the mountain. You can actually walk from one side of the fortress, maybe about a couple hundred feet, and look down upon the sunken city, a view you've never seen, and then walk back to the other side and see the Iron City. And there's definitely definitely a few minutes where you just have to forget what's going on and take in like the, the marvel of what's been created here and what's happening. Um, you see that there is some, a sort of throne that's set up there, and these other soldiers are there, uh, just kind of like uh, sitting around him at all times. And the one that follows him, you f you hear from other guards calling him, um, and you discover that his name is Rono. Rono. You may now role play. I'm very excited to see what what happens here. <laughs> your Your Majesty. So, are you here to murder me? Like you tried when we were in the rift. No, we are not. Let us make that clear from the beginning. Yes, as luck would have it, King Relic, there's even a greater threat to decent lives than you. <clears throat> All right. So, and no, to answer your question, we are not. No, we are not. And, Relic, Your Majesty, you know, I feel that when we last saw each other all those years ago, there was a lot of bad feelings on both sides. And I hope that the time and success that you have had have eased those feelings and we can meet again as the friends that we once were. That is why we come. Friends don't try to murder each other. That's true, but I say this. I will forgive you if you forgive me. For you tried to murder me as well. You gave Only me... Only because you attacked first. And I, I stare directly at Caddick. <laughs> easy. Easy. We were traveling together in good faith. Relic, it was you. Yes, and I wished no harm amongst you. No. I gave you an offer, and you betrayed me. Well, again, that was a long time ago, and I don't want to relitigate things because, frankly, Lord Relic, Your Majesty, I don't know what your proper title, how to address you, but for us it was not a long time ago, and that is why things are odd. Um, if you notice, I don't, you know, we'd ha we don't look much older than the last time you saw us. I assume you just came out of the rift then. Yes. So I assume you have met Vigorish. We have. And Bardo. We have. It seems Bardo has gotten what he wanted. He has. And he has let us know what his plans are. And that is why we come to you. Let me guess. Destroy the rest of what is living and breathing. Use them for dinner. No. Because that's what he does. That's true. And that's what Vigorish does. I know. We have, <laughs> believe me, believe me, the three of us, I think, are, whatever disagreements we have with each other, are all in agreement that what happened to Solst is an atrocity. But, he said, 
his desire, their desire, their number one desire, is not to feed on the living. Yes, it's, it's to kill me. Yes. If you think you are the first to come here and try and or tell me this, you are wrong. All right. Well, we didn't come here to try. We did come here to tell you. We did come here to kind of, I guess, offer a counter-proposal. And what is this proposal? We help you destroy them. I have no need to destroy them. They are nothing to me. All right. Nothing they can do can harm me. Or my people. Rono, Rono um, while you were talking, walks out for a second and comes back in and appears he gets some information. Your Majesty, it appears that some of the council members of Anwar are here. They wish to be included into this, into this greeting. In time, but for now, we must talk privately. They will be allowed to enter shortly. Well, Why are you here? Do you want me to be honest with you? I'm waiting. All right. Um, we are here because we need your help. <laughs> Maybe you don't fear the vampires, but there are still many in this world who will surely fall to them. Yes, but know this. They will not come here. They will not cross the desert. That's why they send people. And they can't muster enough, because they eat those people. We have no fear of the vampires on this side of the desert. Okay, that's fine. We, I guess, uh, my thought was to offer you uh, our assistance in dealing with those vampires as a way of, I don't know, uh, showing that showing that we do not have any uh, any love for them or what they are. But if you do not fear them, that is fine. We... We, right. we need to stop them. And... Well, we simply cannot do it alone. Would you condemn all other living creatures on this world to death? Safe here in your city? I don't condemn anybody to death. That was something that you did. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, uh, you let down the shield. You killed everyone in Solst. Solst was doomed regardless. No, what? Solst was doomed because of the actions that you made. That's where you're wrong. Do you know Bardo initially wanted Solst for himself? Yes, yes. I know all yes. about Bardo and his yes. evil ways or whatever. But so what? There was another person who fooled us. Tricked us, tried us to do what Look, he wanted. You got what you wanted. Yes, right? I did. Free. I did. You ruled the kingdom. You are. The world is not. The world's they dead. Are not my problem. We offer Hello you. is our problem. Right. Hello. The immortal. He's killed Andaria. The world is a shriveling husk. He would have killed Andaria regardless. No. It didn't make a difference, Solst. We... It was a plane chip on his field. All right. I'm going to level. I'm going to level. We come to ask for help to try and undo what he did. There's an opportunity that we can fix it. We can stop him. Well, we'll see what the rest of the council says about this. I, I turned it wrong. Bring them in. Yes, your majesty. Bring in... The council members of Anwar. St Lord Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> it enters walks um, three council members. Hopefully we're joined with them right now. Steve, can you bring them up on Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome to stream. Uh, Patreon member is, is Derek Luxton I've seen so far. Hey, hey, Eric. And I believe What's there's up? I believe there's a, there's two more with them. I can't see him right now. Who's just say hi, everybody? Uh, that would be me and Richard. Awesome! I love the backdrop. 
Richard, Oni, <laughs> nice and Derek. Uh, this is um, the characters. Uh, real quickly, just we'll take one second and say your characters for everybody. Uh, the Dragonborn Garthard. And a Rogue Swashbuckler. Oni? So my character is playing uh, Liv Mora. She is a tiefling. Oh. So, so Seth in this world. Seth. Seth, sorry. And Richard with us? We can't hear you, Richard. So Richard's with them also. Richard is Mistar, which is Robin's father. <laughs> Holy mackerel! So this is... We're seeing a lot of things happening right now. <laughs> This is a big day. I did not see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> As well, so far you can't see it coming because I don't know where he is. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to say right this: if if Richard doesn't get on the stream right now, you're you do not see your father. Oh, uh, I feel like oh no, that's part. Okay, fine. You guys, yeah, we heard uh, we heard you. Uh, oh, oh, oh. You I saw him for a second. He, he's there. <laughs> By the powers of New Zealand. Hello? Can you guys hear me? Yay! 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 I'm here. <laughs> So th the th three of the council members of Anwar, which are, for everybody who knows the exchange, the exchange runs Anwar right now. And uh, you see them all there, and you can now continue to roleplay. <laughs> hey, Relic. I see you got these uh, kids here. But that cask of ale that you promised me, you still owe me. You will get it. Good. Uh, Robin? H hello. Is that you? <laughs> it, it, where have you been for these last seventeen years? Uh, hello, Dad. Um, I um, I've I've been stuck in a in a in a blood rift and um, just got out uh, about a, about a week ago, give or take. So, so why didn't you call me? I left a, st a stone there for you to reach me. Did you not get it? No. Um. Um. When I got out of Solst, it was uh, a. Uh, destroyed husk, uh, overruled by vampires. So uh, I just left there as quick as I could. Uh, the indication that I got that was that you, uh, that the family was all gone. That's how I I didn't know that you were still alive. Fair enough. It's been a, I guess it has been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. I'll yeah. go. I'll go over and I'll give him a hug. Oh. Oh. Uh, it's good to see you. Very good to see you. Uh, it looks like you're doing well for yourself, council member of Anwar's a, a fancy title. Well, yes. One of those things that had to be done. All right. Everyone's been living in my ship, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, have a very nice hotel. <laughs> you notice something very different about um, about Liv Mora. Liv Mora, what do they notice? So Livmore is actually a crystalborn now. Oh, that's mm. a difference. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> wow. So Liv Livmore is actually a crystalborn. She's taken quite a bit of time modifying it. It actually looks similar to what she looks like, almost like a marionette rather than a suit. But it's wearing clothes. But it's it's definitely a machine. Oh. So basically, um, and what you know a little bit about is that people were trying to become crystalborn in some cases they wanted to and, and using necromancy which Volt did in season one um, transferred the essence of someone's body into the crystal very much like a necromancer would do it in a sense oh, yeah. except this time they just tied it into the uh, the suit hmm. so some people have been doing that and it's and amongst the crystalborn it's celebrated it's like oh you're one of us now it's like kind of like Avatar when you become one of, one of them when he, when he does it oh, he right. wakes up I just ruined Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> spoiled alert, alert. You <laughs> spoiled everything. I, I literally just ruined the whole Avatar. <laughs> hey, Master, did you see Presumed Innocent? The wife did it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Evil. Um, <laughs> evil. <laughs> evil. It's <laughs> um, <laughs> a 30 year old joke. Anyway. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um. I really am at a loss for where how to proceed right now. I'm so uh, thrown off by this. Um, Your Highness, Your Majesty. Clearly, we are all on the same side. Oh, well, I would hope so. Your Majesty, what do you wish to do with these mortals? There is nothing for them here. You have come here for no reason. 
might. Would they not um, get in the way of our plans, Your Majesty? That's certainly not our intention. Right. I don't know what those plans are. If they're things that I shouldn't know, nope. I will listen. But we don't want to interrupt anything. All we were looking to do was really try and rekindle a friendship that was lost and see if we can get help. That's what we came here for. And if that's a lost cause, then it's a lost cause. A oh, relic. What have they asked? Here? Yes, exactly. Why are they here? They seem to think that by going back to Solst, they can beat both Bordeaux and Vigorish. Well, I'll say that even more. Um, and it's hard to know who to trust and how to trust, but Vigorish, or Lord Vigorish, um, seems to be open to the same thing that we would like to do, which is fixing this, going back in time and stopping Dragano from destroying the world. Fixing this? You have is a that what he told you? No. It's not what he told me. It's what he didn't tell me, I guess. He let us go. <laughs> Did Isn't he... Lord Vigorish the one that looks like a preteen still? Did he not <laughs> tell you the part <laughs> about where if I die, they win forever? Yeah. I, I do know that, yes. Yes. Then why do you think I stay here? I understand. But when I get, in order to do what we would have to do, we are told you're the only person who can help. The only crystal bone who can help. There is no changing the past. There is only the future. Well, then, that's, if that is the case, that's, that's, still, we must seek to rebuild this world. We can't let vampires have half of it. I, 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 that's simply not true. He changed the past. I have a point to Hogar. They did it. They did that before. We can do it again. Do you, I, Relic. Uh, Relic, you have to remember that we have changed the past before. I'm living proof. I've been back. I've changed. I've altered things in the past. It yes. can be done. I'm sure it might be possible, but are you willing to risk that? I did. I blew up a bunch of time crystals, so... No, the truth is... Uh, the King question Relic we could ask ourselves is, is it worth the risk? Can we live with ourselves not to do it? It could be better, it could be worse, but we've got to at least plan this out, look into it, at least have a discussion about it. Brother Our, doesn't want to change the past. I will not risk myself or my people or the lives of the gnomes and the people of Anwar for a, a fool's errand. <laughs> All right. I find it ironic that I'm here now. It does seem very ironic that you are here in this time. Before I became this, I took some actions that I came to regret later in life. And I think the irony in those actions is that they resulted in much bloodshed at the hands of my then fellow half-giants. As my life went on, more and more I would have appreciated the opportunity that is presented to you today. I understand that you can think at the time and maybe even now that what you did was not only necessary but maybe even Beneficial. As time moves forward, you may come to regret it, and you may never be presented with this opportunity ever again. 
I may not, but I know that by doing what I did, I have freed my people from being slaves to the Red Knight or the people of Stolst. The suit that you're in, where did you awaken? In Solst, in the midst of the attack. In one of the original six suits, I presume. You were also created to be a tool for the masses of Solst. How your consciousness got into the crystal that's there is beyond me. Possibly when the shield came down, maybe that awoken you. But where would you be now? You would be dead. Wasn't it you who brought the shield down? Yes, it was. Lord, King, Your Majesty, whatever your title is, I was not there. I, I was stuck in the blood breath at the time. Um, so I'm not 100% clear on the chronology of it, but I do know at around the same time that the shield went down and Solst was attacked by an army of half-giants, uh, that apparently Drogano attacked a tree, killed Andaria, and killed, slowly but surely, the planet that we all live on. You've been in very... In, uh, Honestly, an uh, unbelievably impressive city you and your, your people have built here to protect your people and the people in your charge. And I think that's a very admirable thing, but the world, the world, look at the sky. The world has died. You have the opportunity, the opportunity, a chance to fix that. And you say, no, not your problem. Whose problem is it? Whose and, problem is it? The world! And what do you propose will happen? What do you think will happen if we do your plan and we go back to Solst? What is your, what is your end game? Your goals? I'll sacrifice Solst in a second if it means saving the world. How? <laughs> Get Findelar and every wizard we possibly can to the tree. Protect the tree. The Pre tree is dead. Yeah, now. But it wasn't then. If, I can, if, if we have the ability to go back in time, I had the ability to go back in time. I don't have to go back to the second you came out and shut the shield down. I go back a week before, two weeks before, before we ever went in the rift in the first place. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't even make a difference. The, the choice that I have, the choice that's in front of me, the choice that calls me to not just give up and kill myself as soon as I came out there, is a choice between taking an action to possibly save the world or giving up. So your plan is to go back before my people were free and still slaves. Their people wouldn't have existed yet, honestly. But they were being created. It's true. And if time changes, and I don't do what I did, then my people will be slaves. Not necessarily. Yes. No. I don't because know if what... it wasn't for me taking down the shield and traveling across the desert and finding my people, all right. All right. What? All right. I, I'm, I'm with you 100% on this. But let me ask you this. What did killing the city of Solst have to do with you doing any of this? If you, we go back in time and we fix this and we, tell, we were able to tell the leaders of Solst, this is what we can do to prevent the destruction of the world. Do you not think they'll give you the freedom to go into the city and take care of the Red Knight who was a problem to them in the first place? If you're going to go in there and take care of that, you can do everything that you did, except you can do it without murdering hundreds of thousands of people and allowing the rest of them to become fodder for vampire tribes. Relic, you could do it with an army at your back. I don't understand why, why death needs to be the start of your freedom. I don't understand it. I didn't understand it 17 years ago. I don't understand it now. Sire, why do we listen to them? They are clearly causing a problem here. They would eradicate all our people to save what? Different people. Lives who are at risk either way. Why should our race die? I agree. 
And that's why I will not be traveling with them. Relic, I have a question for you. What did taking down, how did taking down the shield at Souls allow you to free your people? What was it that caused with you dropping the shield and sacrificing Souls? Actually gave you the ability to be able to free your people. Why couldn't you just leave Souls and free your people the same way you've done already? None of you seem to understand that Souls was doomed regardless if I dropped the shield or not. I don't understand that, yes. It didn't make a difference. I don't I, I, I don't understand. And maybe there's a reason I don't understand. Bardo would have claimed the city for himself anyway. He was trying to do it before us. Why? The only reason he stopped was because Findalar stopped him. Okay. Or allowed him to remain within the city. And what did he do? He betrayed Findalar. He betrayed us. He betrayed to everybody. Okay. Well, stopping Bardot is... If, I could st if we have the ability to stop Drogano from the end of the world, I'm not worried about stopping a vampire with a hat. Then why do you need me? Because in order to do what we need to do, we need you to get in. And what is that? Revive the Archmage. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that, Hogar? They know about my complex relationship Sire. with the Archmage. Sire, I am sorry to interrupt, but it seems that Atlas approaches. Oh, good. Those oh, goody. I hope those cannon work. Man the stations. Prepare us for his arrival. Robin, get behind me. No problem. I'll walk up to Caddock <laughs> and, uh, Slap him on the back and see, like, you're gonna need a drink for this and put my stein in his hands. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. Let's drink. Have a dash. Hmm? You walk out to the, uh, right out to where I told you, the, like, the windows were, the edge of the Iron Fortress, and you look out, and you see this huge, giant sandstorm, like, whoosh, like making its way right towards the, the city. This thing is coming at you faster than you can imagine. And you notice to be the, the dragon Atlas. When he comes, it's a, it's, it's a sandstorm. And you know that he hates the Crystalborn. This is his lands. You are in it. You are a plague. And he is coming. He attacked a few times before, and every time he's attacked, you've lost almost half the city. And you feel this could be a bad sign. You see outside that um, people are blowing horns. The Crystalborn are making their way out to the, out to the uh, whatever uh, defenses they have right now. Some of the walls are set up, some are not. You see um, some gnomes in this in the city come up. You see the cannons on the uh, the fortress. They start aiming over and aiming for the, the sandstorm. And that is where we stop. Holy oh. Dungeon for today. Oof. Yeah. Oof.